Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. My penis, because my toilet's too shallow. I'm glad um, we're recording in progress. All right. It's it's not that I'm so gifted. It's because my toilet was too shallow. How about that? I just, you know, I don't know. Give you the wrong idea. There we go. Um, we're all recording. Yeah, exciting. Because I... I swear to God, I was so heartbroken when I thought I lost that audio last time. Like, I got a little teary out on the inside. I was emotional and shit. I was like, damn, that one was good. How the fuck did I lose that? You fucking But you found it, though. I and, did. And, and I loved it. Like, I enjoyed it. Yeah, okay. Good. The, the intro. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Wait, hold on a second. Let me get the notes ready and pull up the thing. Um, hey, Carol, are you high? Not especially, no. Uh, okay. Do you want me to be? No, it's a, I mean, <laughs> you do whatever makes you happy. I kind of wish I was. Like, that'd be nice. You know what? We'll all do the show high one day and see how it comes out. That yes. one, I'll, yeah, I'll be circumspect about whether we put that one out. <laughs> okay, anyway. I just took another drag for you. you See, I opened the door and you took the Sharing is caring. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Rub it in. You get some of that. Song, you know. I'm sticking it in the mic. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I can feel it. It's going. Yes. If it's that strong where you can catch a contact through Zoom, like maybe you shouldn't be smoking <laughs> that, Carol. All right. Okay. Let's go All before right. I yawn too much. <laughs> okay. Hey, this is D Knight. This is Carol. This is Ty. And you were listening to Pardon the Interaction, which is no longer aptly named because we're now dealing with a espionage investigation. Jesus Christ, how the how in the hell does this guy seem to commit every possible crime? Um, yeah. So um, as usual, it's been a crazy week. Um it's like mm. a roller coaster, except with like drugs and uh, I, 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 on a rocket ship after you've been abducted by aliens. <laughs> I don't know how to describe <laughs> what's going on with the news here lately. It, it's something spectacular to see. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> not only it's a drug have, spaceship roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with anal probing. Um, who wouldn't sign up for that oh dear <laughs> okay if anyone out there hasn't been keeping up with the news and you somehow managed to miss it um former president of the united states had his home raided by the f- <sighs> okay i've been i've been told i shouldn't use the word raid because it's kind of disparaging well and you know getting a search warrant but and also uh, i like to call him the ex-president rather than the former president like i don't know that just i mean look we all know that motherfucker wasn't a real president like he stole (laughs) that shit like he didn't do any work in the white house he spent four years cramming and here we are right and that's why he ended up getting his home searched by the fbi because he's the criminal Yes. yes right so yeah in case you somehow missed that breaking news um there you go um and to basically dive right in we have a segment that i'd like to call unanswerable questions where i um 
read some of the circumstances surrounding um, said FBI investigation into Trump's criminal activities, which include not only espionage, but um, unauthorized retainment of um, government documents and also obstruction of justice. Um, So what we'll do is we'll get into these questions and we'll try and give an, an astute and thoughtful answer, which we will quickly discover is probably impossible because we've never <laughs> witnessed anything more insane than this in our lifetimes. Sure. And to start, Trump's attorney, Alina Haba, whose previous legal experience was working for a small firm that represents a parking garage company, says Trump wants the Department of Justice to release the names of the witnesses who helped secure the search warrant from Mar-a-Lago. Um, why would any lawyer get on TV and say something of, of that fashion? Uh, Carol, do you have any ideas? Well, uh, when you're working in the realm of a parking garage, it's all about producing tickets because that's how they find your car. So she wants to see whose ticket it is. That this is how she can relate to her current function. Also, it's clearly a threat. It's a veiled threat. It's a veiled threat against the people who were involved. We'll find out eventually, she said. We'll we'll find out. Speaking of which, um, the judge involved in um, signing off in that search warrant has ruled that uh, the Department of Justice has a week to redact said aff- underlying affidavit that led to the execution of the search warrant. And if they don't meet their burden, he will take it upon himself to redact the affidavit and him and the Department of Justice will have to find a way to negotiate to reach a deal to get that out to the public. Um, I'm assuming that the judge wants to do this. Well, let's say in good faith, the judge would like to do this to better the public interest. Um, but I personally believe this judge is like getting, because he's getting death threats um, egged on by Republicans. He's probably pissed. He's like, Hey, we'll just redact all the information out of here that could possibly harm the investigation being done by the FBI. And of course there is no information in that affidavit that would be good for Trump. It's probably all damaging. He's like, yeah, you're you're going to get what you asked for. You you guys just don't know. That that's just my personal assumption. Um, yeah, Todd, do you have any idea why Trump's lawyer would <laughs> want that information released to the public? Okay, first I'm going to say we're going to use the term lawyer loosely when <laughs> Alina Hava because she's garbage, like literal garbage. You know, that N-word is her favorite jam. Um, she's... She not, couldn't qualify to be on She-Hulk attorney in law. No, <laughs> she's not the brightest in the bunch. Um, yeah. Her, she's just, they're throwing fucking cheeseburgers at the wall. That's all she's doing with her, like, statements and, you know, what have you. Um, with nothing, no substance behind it. No, uh, she does it because that's what they do. Period. You know, they're a sideshow. They are a sideshow circus and she's all in on it because she also is a. I mean, sideshow Bob is thoroughly offended that you are comparing Alina Bob or uh, Alina Haba to his (laughs) fucking circus. Like, uh, he deserves better than that. And that's show Bob convicted murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sad, that's a sad thing that he is more credible than Alina Haba. <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. Here we are. All Un- right. Questions. Why the fuck? Yeah. This lawyer <clears throat> say what she said. I'm going to go with because she's a goddamn moron. Uh, that's probably an accurate answer. All right, next question. At least one lawyer on the Trump legal team, led by former assistant U.S. attorney Evan Corcoran, presumably the only qualified attorney representing Trump at this point, called up a reporter covering the story after the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago 
for any, for any insight into how the Justice Department might next proceed. Which lawyer on Trump's legal team do you believe that was? Which journalists did they contact? And why would any lawyer believe that that was a reasonable course of action? Carol, go. Uh, does, does Rudy still work there? <laughs> um, I'm still going with Rudy. He took a break from testifying in Georgia um, on his own behalf to, to call in on, his, on behalf of his buddy. Um, why? Desperation. I think that they they just don't have anything. They don't know how to defend an indefensible case. And they're hoping that a journalist is better at doing um, their due diligence than they are. Uh, it's definitely fair. Maggie Haberman. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just, oh my God, Carol, I was just going to say Maggie. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay, you're playing the game too well. These are supposed to be unanswerable. Oh, and, and you gave away that. That's probably <laughs> that the real answer. Um, <laughs> all right. Di, what are you, what are your thoughts on? Why? No, I'm totally co-signing Carol right there. Oh. That's exactly. That's Woo! exactly what I, that's exactly what I think about this um which lawyer i i mean if if we posted pictures of all his lawyers you would just scroll through the the random um bizarro world of like uh what is it tall brunette lawyers and then evan and you'd be like uh what's that, what's that ch- uh christina bob that's, yeah that's that's, that's who i'm, I'm going to say Christina Bob in the study with Maggie Haberman. Man. And <laughs> yeah. none of them thought it was a good idea because it's not. <laughs> but they're lunatics. So here we are. That is fantastic. Um, I look, I the good luck figuring out which lawyer on Trump's payroll was like, yeah, I'm gonna call up the he, the person I believe they called was probably Sean Hannity. Um, again, former unofficial White House advisor, Sean Hannity, who also co-host or rather host a Fox News TV show part time um, when he's when he's not busy working. I think they called up Fox News and were like, damn, what do we do, bro? And yes, because they obviously I mean, Trump's legal team. Look, he's he's looking for qualified lawyers as we speak and everyone's telling him no because they've already looked at the search warrant and uh, his current legal counsel might be going to jail. No, what, who would touch that? And no reasonable, reasonably intelligent attorney would even get Rudy, as Carol said, but then you said reasonable. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. man. That's, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, next question. The FBI interviewed former White House counsel Pat Cipollone and his former deputy Pat Philbin earlier this year as part of an investigation in the federal records taken to Donald Trump's Palm Beach Resort at Mar-a-Lago. Philbin in the spring and um, an undetermined time for Cipollone. Um, apart from them, how many other witnesses have been interviewed by DOJ? And how much information could Cipollone and Philbin have provided, considering they were both designated liaisons with the National Archives? Um, Ty, have at it. I'm going to say 12. I don't know why, but that just sounds like a good number. I'm going to say 12 attorneys, at least. uh, You you know these are supposed to be unanswerable questions, right? (laughs) We're not supposed to be able to, like, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm... somewhat answering them but that's what i i think there's at least 12 we've got 12 cooperating witnesses in this investigation absolutely absolutely at least in this investigation and that part of it um he was not donald trump is like he doesn't think shit through like, so he's not the most... You don't uh, say. I, I don't... <laughs> I don't know how, how you would say, like, finessed person as far as, like, when it comes to throwing shit out there and saying, doing, you know, whatever it is he does. But 
I think in addition, like I said, in addition to Cipollone and Philbin, yeah, I think it's at least a dozen people in his circle in Trump world who are diming out. That seems low. Um, Ta- or rather, Carol, how, how about you? Any any thoughts on who the DOJ might have interviewed, how many people, and what, what information could they have provided? Well, um, I was going to say 69 cooperating witnesses. So that nice. means you have at least um, 34 groups of two people cooperating with each other um, and one Math person who's left out. 30. I, I've been there. Four. No, uh, 34 times two plus one. Right? 68. Yeah. Now that go ahead and say yeah. it again for the, for the audience. Damn it. <laughs> um, make me question my math just because I'm bad at math, but then no, I, was, I right. was talking about for other people trying to do it in their heads, not your math. Um, I see. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the, the one extra person is going to have to just do it in their heads because there's only 34 couples there. They're all witnesses. Uh, how much evidence could they have? Ha- how much information could they have had? Um, 87% of it. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good percentage. I think. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not. I'm glad you were there to say nice, by the way. The point of this game, it, 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 <laughs> again, it, the segment is entitled Un- unanswerable questions and you've, You know, anyway. All right. Next question. (laughs) Trump's legal team could have filed a temporary restraining order blocking DOJ's access to the item seized from Mar-a-Lago, but they've yet to do so. What is the holdup? Why are they not doing anything? Uh, Ty, after you. Because they don't want to. They're playing this freaking game. Their end game is to expose the people like they are chomping at the bit like they want to know who's the snitch who's the rat and they're you know hedging their bets and playing their game to get to that you know to get to that point and just a sidebar can we call can can we switch from mar-a-lago to (laughs) maga-lago That seems appropriate. I'll allow. I it. feel like that's what we should call it, Maga Lago, from now on. All I'm right, it's official. That's from now on, uh, Donald Trump's resort and where the fuck is he at? Uh, it's Panama. I don't know. Palm, Palm Beach. Palm. Yeah. So here for to be known as Maga Lago. Done. <laughs> Wand waved. Okay, I yield my time. Uh, Carol. <laughs> What uh, what is why? Trump's legal team doing? Why aren't they trying to block DOJ from accessing the evidence that, that they seized from Mar-a-Lago? Mag-a-Lago. I mean, it, Mag-a-Lago. It seems like you might know something I don't, but I, I have no reason to believe they didn't try blocking the access already. And uh, we're uh, I can confirm that they have made no motion in court to file a temporary restraining order. I couldn't tell you why. So. Okay, so we'll, we're going. I'm going to take your word for it because um, I you read a thing and I didn't. That's the yeah, that's authority. exactly what I read a thing. <laughs> you read a thing. Um, I mean, how long is he even keeping each attorney? Like, do they get arrested before they finish drafting <laughs> a filing for him? <laughs> Michael Cohen was saying his advice to the Trump's legal team is to themselves get lawyers. So Mike, Michael Cohen is an astute attorney um, and, and would understand that from his own personal experiences. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, in addition, I don't think any of them are like exemplary in the field of legal competence. Um, maybe they don't know. Are you saying that Trump's lawyers aren't good at lawyering? I am saying that. Yes. And, you know, I, I'm an expert at um, whatever kind of law that is because I, I, I you know, negotiate software contracts. I'm just as qualified as his, his lawyers. To, if, not, to do, if not more so. 
you know I, what? I, Maybe I you should have. I, I move for a next question thing or Derek's answer. Uh, next question. Uh, Trump had an opportunity to return all of the documents at DOJ's initial request um, months before they issued a subpoena and then uh, executed a search warrant upon Magalago. Why? Ooh, I know this one. Why didn't he return them? Oh, ooh, because he didn't want to. Um, <laughs> they were they're very incriminating and. Um, he wanted to still have them, especially if he was planning on selling, uh, you know, country secrets. Yeah, you have to have them. You got to show up with the box. Got to show up with the box. Um, okay, for those of you listening, we have a upcoming segment entitled Reckless Speculation. And I think Carol jumped the gun there. Uh, I just want to sure. be clear that we're not necessarily accusing Trump of of selling classified secrets. I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> His lawyers may or may not be equipped to file a temporary restraining order, uh, but they're probably perfectly capable of filing a lawsuit against three morons of the podcast. Um, Ty, what are your thoughts on why he didn't return the documents to DOJ upon their initial request? Precious. Okay. That was my sneak. No, you nailed it. That, that was yeah, that was he was rubbing the documents <laughs> like the ring of power. <laughs> that, that, precious. that was my precious. That was my, uh, yeah, that um, was, that's it. That's my, that's my contribution to that. They were his precious. He is Smeagol, and they were his precious, and he was holding on to them. There you go. See, I did it again. All right, a little um, too accurate. I mean, it's, <laughs> these are supposed to be unanswerable. I mean, I okay. Next question. By the way, by the way, D Knight, if they if they wanted to bring a defamation lawsuit against against me and Ty, they would have to prove that what we said wasn't true. So. That's totally fair. Uh, the so discovery, that'll be fun. Yes. This is why I have a lawyer. <laughs> okay next question officials at doj subpoenaed trump to attain surveillance footage of the hallway outside of the storage room at mar-a-lago where the documents were being stored and saw something that alarmed them what could they have possibly witnessed on the security footage uh carol go um montage with the benny hill music ty go Everything. I feel like we're on the prices right. Everything. <laughs> I say it again. One dollar. Uh, Two dollars. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> is, is anyone going to do like the you prices kill. right music thing? <laughs> you Next. <laughs> I love when I love when Carol sings. I, I don't know. It makes me sad. Mm. Um, but yeah, everything. He is, he's taunting it like he did the healthcare plan. We'll we'll see what happens. He yeah, just two wants weeks. to yeah. Uh, two weeks. He just wants to throw meat to his base and throw federal agents under the bus who are investigating him. It's a thinly veiled attempt to be a fucking asshole and wannabe mobster, period. We're definitely getting sued. Okay, next, next. well, I'm not entirely certain this is even the question. Okay, we're going to get into some of Trump's shifting statements um, since the news broke that the FBI was searching mag lago <clears throat> um, Trump's initial statement on the matter was that the FBI broke into his home. Um, he said, what is the difference between this and Watergate where operatives broke into the Democratic National Committee? Here in reverse, Democrats broke into the home of the 45th president of the United States. Um, then from there, it moved to the search was unnecessary and inappropriate. From there, it moved to it's a witch hunt. Uh, after that, it moved to the evidence was planted and no one was allowed to watch the raid. We come 
to find out, however, that Trump watched the FBI raid remotely in New York through surveillance cameras and his lawyer was present. But then he moved on to say that the documents weren't classified. From there, Trump says that he, in fact, did return all of the documents. From there, he moved to questions about Hillary Clinton. From there, he moved on to Obama did the same thing. The 33 million documents, how many of them were nuclear? From there, Trump's story shifted to why won't the FBI release the warrant? Well, the FBI releases the warrant. And then Trump's story shifted to he has done nothing wrong. And from there, (laughs) his story shifted. I can't believe he said this. He (laughs) takes classified documents home all the time for homework. (laughs) Homework? Because everyone brings their their work home with them. Homework? Wait, not all. From there, his story shifted to the idea that he has a standing order that every classified document that he takes out of the white house automatically becomes declassified. But wait, there's more from there. His story shifted to the idea that the documents are covered by attorney client privilege, but also executive privilege. But from there, Trump demanded that the FBI returned everything they seized. He also claimed the FBI stole his passports. The FBI, in fact, had already returned his passports. From there, the story shifted to why hasn't the FBI unsealed the affidavit? We also had, at some point, sources close close to Trump, quote unquote, point the finger at Mark Meadows. Apparently, Mark Meadows is somehow to blame for this. Also, We had sources close to Trump say that he was reluctant to furnish presidential records to the National Archives because Democratic political appointees at the J or rather Democratic political appointees were going to give the the documents to the January 6th committee. And he doesn't trust Biden Obama appointees at the archives. Somewhere in there, we also had Trump sending a threatening message to Merrick Garland through one of his cronies. Um, asking how he can turn down the heat because he's as he's witnessed people around the country being very unhappy with the FBI searching Mar-a-Lago. Um, yeah, I don't really, there's more questions than I can possibly ask about what is going on with, with Trump shifting narratives there. I mean, if, if feel free to chime in, like it go either of you go carol i'm waiting for that question mark at the end to indicate that it was a question yeah shifting stories uh, i mean that's um that's uh no i think that's more of a a, a episode of yo what the fuck um so i mean throw throwing defenses at the wall overwhelming people with too many ideas so they can't keep a clear um clear impression of what they think is going on um, the very obvious sentiment that he is too stupid to shut up and just doesn't know any better. He's just, he's just has diarrhea of the mouth. Um, but more, I think he's been trained to, um, unsettle people with too much information. I agree Nobody knows with what's you, what. Carol. I agree with you, Carol. He doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. That's it. He doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. He's throwing anything and everything out there. His cheeseburgers, 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 hamburgers, nuggets, then <laughs> with a cup of coffee. Yes, <laughs> at the wall. That's his jam. Oh, okay. I have I have a question. Is Trump aware that any statements that he makes in public can be used against him in court if he is prosecuted? Yes, but he is too fucking stupid to care. All right, that wasn't an unanswerable question, apparently. Oh. <laughs> um, 
I also say yes, but his hubris uh, prevents him from believing he's ever done anything wrong. Yes. Okay, I fair. Is Trump getting any advice from his attorneys before he throws out each of these various shifting narratives about the FBI or why the documents were there or how they were seized, so on and so forth? What, what are his lawyers telling him? I mean, if I were his lawyer, aside from, you know, all of the horrible self-hatred I would have, um, I would just be telling him to shut the fuck up. Sir, sir, please, please let your lawyers issue the statements. Sir, please stop making these statements. Uh, sir, you're hurting our case. Please refrain from making any further statements. Shut the fuck up. You know, <laughs> that, that in a nutshell, there you go. I co-sign. I co-sign Carol and her legal expertise. I believe that was live footage of Trump's legal team um, giving Trump advice. Uh, we, we probably shut the fuck up. We probably was, violated yeah. attorney-client privilege there. Um, <laughs> where might Trump be getting all of these insane ideas from? Like, if he's not listening to his lawyers. Who by chance might be advising him on how to handle this situation? Like, where are all these random spaghetti at the wall scenarios coming from? Ty. They're coming from him. And that's it. He's driving the bus of the conspiracy theories, the Um, everything that he's saying and trying to put out there, it's all coming from him, period. I mean, his pillow salesman friend might be there. Sorry. That is totally fair. I forgot about Mike Lindell. Um, For those of you not familiar with Mike Lindell, he is uh, the CEO of a a company called MyPillow, where they uh, sell slippers for four easy installments of $59.99 on Fox News, um, his main source of revenue at the moment. Um, also, former crackhead, although I'm not sure if you can ever perform from being a crackhead. Anyway, yeah, that's the, you know what? We're it's not holding that against him, just to, uh, you know, addiction him. That's true. I mean, addiction is a thing. It's real. Not holding that against. Um, I'm not either, but also, like, someone who was addicted to crack, I probably wouldn't have them advising me if I were a former president. Just saying. No, and Um, the former president was probably wondering what kept happening to his furniture. (laughs) (laughs) Um, good answer. Okay. Well, that concludes, um, unanswerable questions. Uh, we surprisingly got more answers than I concluded we would before the segment started. I, I'm very impressed. Thank you, Ty. Thank you, Carol. You, you two have been exceptional. Thanks. But have you, did you do the ones from your, from your, uh, Twitter? We're going to get to those in just a few. Excellent. What we're going to do now is go back and answer some of these questions um, in the most outrageous, um, absurd fashion we can possibly think of in a segment that we will entitle Reckless Speculation. Um, I wish I had a sounder for this, just to alert everyone that from here on out, like we're not, we're not seriously um accusing anyone of anything like just want like legal disclaimer don't sue us we're recklessly speculating here all right now that we have that out of the way um all right trump's attorney asking the department of justice to release the names of the witness who helped secure the search warrant in mar-a-lago why would any lawyer get on TV and say something that ridiculous? My my 
my personal theory on this is um, <clears throat> uh, these people aren't actually lawyers. They're, they're um, hired actors that get on TV and say things and they look lawyerly, but in their spare time, they do coke and have orgies at Mar-a-Lago that um, um, former house representatives who are wheelchair bound are no longer allowed to attend. What, 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 uh, what, what do you two think? Honest, rather honest speculation um, here. I think that Alina Hava is the pseudonym of a Russia Today news anchor. Was it Russia Times? RT. Um, yeah, she has been a family veiled disguise as an American, an attorney. <laughs> And um, she dwells in a cave of Captain Wilbeast. Um, and Wilbeast tells her at one point, I told her to get up and take it for Russian. Uh, <clears throat> so, so, am I missing the point of your segment? I think you beat me. I think you're playing the game better than I am. She, he hired her from Russia, the good one. That's. Damn, I wish I had a thought of that. God damn. Alina Haba is a wildebeest. Okay. <laughs> Not what I said. <laughs> she was being held hostage by wildebeest on behalf of Russia. Okay. And she's Russian. And we're rushing into the next question. Okay. All right. Why did one of Trump's attorneys call a member of the media who was covering the story asking for insight in how the Justice Department should proceed? Um, in which lawyer, in which journalist, and why would anyone believe that was a good idea? Um, I, all right. I'm going to say it was actually Trump's lead attorney, Evan Cochran, um again i can't imagine why this person would want to work for trump but after having um signed the deal and taking trump as a as his client i mean he's got to be calling like i don't know stephen colbert to figure like hey man can you just like <laughs> give me some jokes to use to hammer this guy into doing the right thing. <laughs> like, what can I say? What can I do? You know him better than anyone. Just tell me I'm holding on for dear life. Help me save myself. <laughs> help me help me not give you more material for your show. <laughs> not I get him to shut the fuck up. What am I supposed to do? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> A heartfelt appeal. I'm the serious lawyer. <laughs> yes, it is. I, I'm supposed to be the respectable person on this legal team. And we are so fucked. Colbert saved the day. Are you okay, Derek? No, I just, I mean, <laughs> I just, I was trying to put myself in, in, in the shoes of one of Trump's attorneys. And I'm like, I've never done like mushrooms or like some, some, some weird trippy shit like acid, but I gotta imagine if you're, you're a, C, a, a serious, uh, a, like, <sighs> You you've get you've got a law a law career where you've been taking serious cases for what 20, 30 years. You've never experienced anything like this. It's it's gotta be the most weird, trippy, coked up, mushrooms, ayahuasca, acid all mixed together thing you've you've ever like what do you do? Like how do you even how do you even get out of bed in the morning and go to work? When when this is what you have to deal with, I I, I don't know. Yeah, they put their boots on. I guess 
and they put their integrity to the side and go full bore, balls to the walls to defend this guy, that guy. I think that's, you know, that's, that's just, they're like, fuck it. I don't care about my principles. I don't care about my integrity. I'm just going to go all in for whatever reason. I mean, this is too, this is too astute of an answer. Like I just, uh, that's too honest. Like that might be real. Like, I- <laughs> But that's like, that's where, that's where they are. That's where they are. Like, that's, that's it. Like, that's completely weird. All right. You're not reckless enough. I'm, I'm just yeah, we here. Just get wild. Who's he calling? Uh, okay. We got fucking Jenna Ellis. I know she's not involved anymore, but I love to troll her. Uh, <laughs> Jenna Ellis, if I were her, I mean... I got to say that she's going to call Laura Ingram, who went to law school. She was a practicing attorney for many years. So she. Oh, um, good old and, Laura Ingram. Yeah. And she's like super traitory. She's got the Nazi Barbie vibe down pat. Oh, you mean um, wire hanger Nazi? Yeah, that one. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah they're just shooting the shit and she's like hey um i haven't said anything awful today on twitter yet can you give me some pointers and laura's like yeah well first you have to give off an air of um, sophistication and then just say something so fucking stupid and like i know no one respects me but they pay me a lot at fox news so Fuck it. And that's the attitude you have to have if you want to succeed in this industry. Um, I have no integrity, so fuck it. Pay me. Yep. Yeah. Carol summed it up. Too too accurate. <laughs> Carol summed it up. Fuck you, pay me. That's it. That too too real life, too realistic. Um all right. FBI. As we said, interviewed Pat Subloney and Pat Philbin earlier this year. Um, apart from them, uh, who else has, how many other people have D, has the DOJ interviewed and what kind of information could they have possibly provided? Um, Carol, I believe you, you gave a number of 69. I think that's low. I think there's hundreds of people <laughs> that, that have been interviewed by the Department of Justice and we might have like a hundred cooperators. There might be a hundred people in Trump circle from his time in the White House and in in Trump Org and working at Mar Lago and in Trump Center Circle and friends and family, and they're all ratting him out. They're all you I I think when DOJ shows up with like, hey, bitch, espionage. Oh fuck. People are like, oh god damn it. I guess I, yeah. You, you got you got them let, here. Let me stay out of jail. I think what what, what do we have? Jared Kushner is probably in on it. I mean, we got his fucking chief financial officer getting a sweetheart deal in New York earlier today. Uh, who else? Ivana's dead, so she was probably cooperating. I mean, I had to take her out. Um, you know, Don Jr. has been very shifty on the Twitter here lately, going off off the rails entirely into nonsense world. Uh, he he seems scared. Um, what else we got here? The chef in Mar-a-Lago, the maid, um, the housekeeping for sure. Uh, cheap, the, like, uh, you know, what is the management or, uh, scenario like down there? I don't know, but I'm sure everyone from like, the guy who fucking waters the plants all the way up to like the, the, the manager of Marla. I, they're all in on it. Everyone. There's like 470 people ratting him out as we speak. 
I mean, yeah, it was probably something like, I don't know if I should say anything. Has Lindsay said anything yet about the pro? Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> They'll tell Mitch I said that. And they'll be like, we talked to Mitch. And they'll be like, oh. I'd, hey, look. McConnell could be cooperating. Mark Meadows has been silent. Where is he? Where is he? He has disappeared. Like, he has been radio silent through all of this. Look, so, no yeah. one's been harder to find since Waldo. <laughs> so, reckless speculation... Mark Meadows has been put in witness protection <laughs> in, uh, let's see, Boise, Idaho. <laughs> he's going under the name Merle Fitzpatrick. And he has dyed his hair red. I mean, this sounds like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Is this a racer? Like, what are we, is there a hot black girl somewhere in here? Ty, you want to be the obligatory? Um, anyway. Uh- <laughs> I I agree. Like I Mark Meadows has completely disappeared. I think he's I think he's the mole. But as far <laughs> as well, yeah, well, as far as like the January 6th investigation, but as far as the Mar-a-Lago search, my money's on Jared. You think Jared did it, huh? I think Jared did it. Jared did it in the storeroom. Uh, with Ivanka. I mean, there's uh, the, every time you see a picture of Trump with Jared, Jared can't even look him in the eye. So I'm with you. He, Jared is, he saw the writing on the wall and he's like, I'm getting off this fucking, I'm getting out of this clown car. And I think it was him. Absolutely. He went to Jared. You know, I don't know that that joke carries on through the whole United States. Do you guys have that store? It might. It, it Do you guys might. have that store? It's like a uh, jewelry store. Yeah, we have a Jared jeweler down here. We don't. Hear, we don't hear. That's that's the that's the tagline. He went to Jared. I'm glad I explained that joke. I mean, I, we'll you know, have I some of that he, every episode. I hope someone's seen commercials before. Yeah. I think our audience has seen commercials. Hopefully. And for any of you out there who haven't seen commercials, like Jesus Christ, how the fuck have you survived the last three years of being cooped up at home 24 hours a day for months and months on end? Um, and Jared, uh, um, we, we will accept our payment for this unapproved sponsorship in the form of matching friendship necklaces. For <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the on the Trump's legal team and why they have yet to file a temporary restraining order um, against the DOJ to keep them from going through the evidence. Um, my theory here is that they're not real lawyers, other than that one guy, and he's too busy like trying to deal with the the cocaine alien abduction roller coaster on crack um, to even be can like. I'm not entirely certain any of these lawyers have done a single thing as it pertains to the the court case. I mean, we've, the motion to unseal the warrant absent, um, the motion to unseal this aff- affidavit absent. No, no, like what the f- are, like? Are, I don't understand. What are they doing? What are they doing with their time? I I just don't. Are they playing Minecraft with the fucking kid? Wait, that's an old game. What's a newer? game the kids roblox play. that's what the kids are doing yeah okay so yeah i'm 400 years old um they're they're playing roblox now um 24 hours a day trying to keep their mind off of like this insanity that like the it's over we're fucked we might as well get paid to have fun on the internet with roblox yeah that's it yeah Yes. Yeah, there's no argument there. You're like, oh man, that's not even that <laughs> reckless. That's probably they're pl- probably playing robot. You know what? No, no, they're probably on the metaverse with the shitty avatars. Um, they're Facebook. like, I don't understand what you're saying. We 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 blocked them on Twitter. We blocked the DOJ <laughs> on Facebook. We blocked their email. 
how much more we could have blocked this for you. <laughs> then they went back to playing Roblox. <laughs> then they went back to playing Roblox. <laughs> okay, before this all got a, got out of hand, um, the DOJ, they gave Trump the opportunity to return all the documents that he took from Mar-a-Lago. Uh, he did not. What the fuck was he thinking? Any of you, just go bananas here. Feel free. He took some really nice pictures on the back of them, and he didn't want to keep losing them because they had sentimental value. You see, um, people had told him he threw on a third grade level, but he really thought that this was sixth grade or higher, and he just wanted Ivanka to be proud of and fuck him. That makes a lot of sense, Carol. Here, look at my pictures, Ivanka. Don't you like the pretty horsey with the eight ball of cocaine? Um, uh, Was that reckless enough? I'm going to go. I'm, well, I maybe. But I think I'm going to go with, like, he hadn't made any money off of them yet. So he was like, well, hell no. Like, why would I give this shit back when I've, I haven't even sold the secret yet? Like, why would I? Come on, DOJ. You should know how this works. Like, haven't you heard of espionage before? Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? No. I do the best espionage. <laughs> no, one the espi- spy. no one espionages the way that I do. It, it, I espionage like no one's ever seen. Yeah, that, yeah. Precious. The pr- <laughs> <laughs> he's hold, He's in the corner holding on to the boxes of classified information like Schmeagle. <laughs> my precious. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. The Department of Justice, <laughs> they subpoenaed the surveillance footage from Mar-a-Lago and apparently they were so alarmed by what they saw, they felt it necessary to execute a search warrant. What might they have seen on, on the surveillance camera? I'm going to go with, um, even though Trump had plenty of opportunity to delete the surveillance footage before he handed it over, uh, he did not. His lawyers complied. And what they saw was like, uh, Min- Mohammed bin Salman going in and out of the storeroom, taking handfuls of shit and flying it back to Saudi Arabia. Because, I mean, I, it can't get any fucking more ridiculous than that, right? I mean, the guy who's... Yeah, clearly we don't need national security secrets falling into the hands of someone who's willing to dismember uh, a Washington Post journalist. I... So, yeah, sure. Why not? Bone saw. With, with the documents in the basement, like a game of Clue. Yeah, that's it. That's it. MBS in the basement with the bone saw. Again, reckless speculation, Muhammad. Don't, <laughs> don't sue me. Don't disembowel me. Don't dismember me. Actually, I mean, it's been a rough couple of years. Like, if I got to die, I mean, just put me out of my misery quick. I'm tired. Like, bro, I just... Uh, Jesus. Um, all right. Trump shifting statements. What the fuck? I'm going to go with um, Trump has moved on from Adderall to bigger and better things um, like crystal meth. Because <laughs> I got no explanation for this word salad of a Friend. I mean, the sh- it just gets more every everything he said. It got more and more ridiculous, like to the point where we're like, oh, they planted the documents, but I declassified them. But also, I demand that they return the evidence. They like that only makes sense if you're high. Carol, wouldn't you agree? Uh, yes, as the legal expert and expert on on being so. Uh, yeah. But have we considered? Um, Offering him an upgrade to bath salt to see whose face is he. 
be like, hey, Matt Gates, remember when you used to have a face? Um, well, because see, Trump I'm, ate it when he was on bath salts. <laughs> really sad. I've never done bath salts, so I don't understand the inclination to eat someone's face off. But um, yeah, apparently that's that's a thing. That's 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 one of the potential side effects of doing bath salts. So I could totally see how he could come up with all these ideas if he were high on on the bath salts. That that's outside actually, wrestling alligators. Yeah, people do that. That's the thing. I've not wrestled any alligators, but I also haven't done bath salts. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there you, there That's you go. True. Uh, but you've also not ever like uh, sent Venmo to an underage girl for sex. So, ice cream, Ty. He yeah. he paid thousands of dollars for ice cream. For ice cream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I love Jenny's, but I ain't never spent no goddamn thousand dollars on some Jenny's ice cream. Um it's never happened. Not not because you're not a pedophile. My reckless speculation will be a little too close to to reality again. Yeah, brain is deteriorating so rapidly he is completely unaware of what he's doing and saying. I mean, that sounds too realistic. I, uh, then he's oh. been possessed by demons <laughs> <laughs> for the last 65 years. Okay, so the idea that they're like, oh, they're accusing the Democrats of satanic rituals where they were we're summoning demons and killing children. That's what it's projection. That's they're the ones that are actually doing that. Got it. Yes. That's Fair. the only story that makes sense. I mean, that is a little too real. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. Whose idea was it to, I don't know, threaten Merrick Garland? Like, in what world would you want to be like, Hey, Merrick Garland, that's a nice Department of Justice you got there. It would be a shame if something happened to it. Whose fucking idea was that shit? And what were they high on? Because bath salts ain't enough. I... Yeah. Dark Garland. Ugh. I mean, I'm a fan. <laughs> Well, you know oh. the lasers came out of his eyes when he heard that shit. <laughs> um, he is so the self-importance and hubris is so strong with Trump that he feels like to say something like that and like to go to Garland's like, hey, how can you turn down the heat on this? Like, seriously, like it is. He is so full of himself. It's fucking ridiculous. Like, I can't even, like, with, like, thinking about his moves. Yeah. Like, how he, and it's not the first time, like, he is, like reached out to witnesses before he is you know like oh yeah it's, it's fucking insane like this is out of control behavior from even a former president like what the what are you doing hey you know what it makes me wonder it makes me wonder like what kind of conversations was he having with bill barr back in the day or, <laughs> Or like, what was he telling Rod rosenstein when he was trying to get him to fire um robert Mueller? from his um appointment special like what why can't you just tell everyone i needed the toilet <laughs> <laughs> okay for Look, those that, of you who don't remember the throwback it's about <laughs> that is a reference to a former attorney acting attorney Gen- general um <laughs> matthew whitaker your favorite yeah, my your favorite. favorite not the one who has rod in his name no i'm not rod a- uh, yeah, I'm not I thought a, a dude named guy. Rod would need a, a long dick toilet. 
Hey, white rides. Um, wait, that didn't come out right. I meant like as in the purse. Anyway, um, yeah, no, n- um, not a rod fan. Yeah, look, man, what what kind of conversations was Trump having with the attorney generals who used to work for him, where he was like, "Oh yeah, it'll be totally fine if I threaten Mary Garland." Like this shit don't make any sense. Like it's in like you they don't do this in the movies. Like the good fellas are like sitting around like, God damn, he did what? Oh shit, we better get the fuck out. Like this He's is like fucking uh Diego and fucking blow. <laughs> <laughs> when he tells like when he tells like George, he's like Thank you. Oh, she knows yours. God. Remember when Cesar wanted to sleep you with the boat? Oh. Okay, there. I, did that. <laughs> I mean, I, I do imagine the conversations with the previous attorneys general allowed him to think that he could get away with anything he wanted. He was they were probably planning on succeeding in their coup, having the second term and using um the office of attorney general to attack his political adversaries. Are, I'm sorry, are we still doing recu- reckless speculation? No, that yeah, yeah, no, that's not reckless enough. That's that's too accurate. Uh, no, I didn't know if you we failed. were. I failed. Um, this was a real, that was my uh, good faith analysis. No, no points for why you. Why he think. <laughs> okay, fun fact. So you guys, you've seen Blow, yes? Yeah, um, yeah the, that would be. The, the guy who played. Johnny. Um, Johnny Depp. Not Johnny, Johnny Depp's. Um, my the friend was actually locked up with him. Um, and Latuna here. Um, but the guy who played Diego, who was Johnny Depp's, you know, his yeah. compadre, whatever. Wasn't it Benicio Del name? Toro? I don't know he how played, to. He played his name in the. I don't know how to say, pronounce his last name. Well, Johnny well, his, name was Diego. his name was Diego in the. No, I know who he is. I just, okay. I'm sorry, I can't well, say his name. I, okay. I think well, it's Jordy fun, Moya, but the, he's fucking Yes, handsome. well, fun like, fact, um, Diego's character was based off of the real guy, his, whose name was Carlos Letterer. His yeah. father was a Nazi and German. He put on all of the drug shipments that he shipped from Pablo Escobar, he put swastikas on the shipments that he sent of his drugs. Fun fact for those of you interested <laughs> in the Medellin cartel. <laughs> yeah. So he put, yeah. Uh, like German said, Colombian I, drug lord. I don't know if they making those <laughs> anymore, but that was some unique shit. I mean, I guess if I were to like be like, hey, has there ever been anything crazier than this whole Trump situation, it would probably be the German Nazi Colombian drug lord who yes, started a he, he would put, drug. Uh, swastikas on all of the shipments of the drugs that he sent. Yeah. Some <laughs> but, weird shit. Um, if you're if you're wondering how the German how the Germans ended up in Colombia, that's a whole nother story. Like it's a whole nother podcast. Sorry, we can't help you there. You Google that. It's um yeah, good luck. So how many times were you guys going to let me say Benicio Del Toro before you said shut up? Oh, I tried to. T- <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, in my I defense, tried to j- I saw it 25 years ago. <laughs> I tried to jump in there. Did, I don't know how to say his name, but if you saw his face, you would. He's one of those guys. He's like in everything. And then you see him, you're like, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. No, everywhere. Bad boys. Oh, Columbiana. Yeah, no. Oh, he was so good. Oh my gosh, I love him. He was so Are you hot for him right now, Ty? I am. Like he was like he was like really good. Like he I, reminds I, me of my I bet friend. you he has a big dick toilet. <laughs> he reminds me of my first narco boyfriend. Like it was Oh like... Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, you're a narco chaser. That's that's um Yes, like he did like he would have, like, he came up to me. It was a place that we would go to, always in Wadis. Um, and his uh, bodyguard came up to me, and, and then we started hanging out. And, and he had the, the Federalists, who were the 
you know, uh, policias on payroll who would take me back and forth to the border. Um, <laughs> like they would like pick me up and take me and we'd go through and like take me over the, the bridge. Ty, your like, best love life is more interesting than the Trump White House. <laughs> like, when are we getting the Netflix documentary on your exes? Like, can we put that together? Like, that would be a fucking incredible My story. friend was like, he was locked up with George Young. And oh so... God. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the world... Well, he, was, um, he was caught with... He had, uh, like, 600-something pounds in a diesel truck. Of blow, but yeah, but he was locked up when uh, with uh, George Young, Boston George. Uh, and, when did he go to jail? Was that the nineties? Uh, well, it was shit. He did. Um, when did Carlos? Because I moved back in twenty sixteen, and Carlos had just gotten out because he did a ten year bid for his brother, um, and. But yeah, he was <laughs> he was locked up with George, so it was that's some crazy shit. <laughs> you got you have some varied tastes there. You uh, do we? You know what? Next week uh, we'll do another segment of love, love stories from Ty, um, where we'll just dive into we'll crazy exes. We'll do cartel stories. Ah uh, no, no, we're not doing that one because I like living. <laughs> Like it's it's funny enough we're making jokes about getting sued by Trump and maybe dismembered by like the Saudis. I I ain't fucking with the cartels. You have at that one. That'll be a that'll be a solo episode by Ty. <laughs> yeah, you have at it. Yeah, I'm I'm out. <laughs> I'm totally out. Okay, look, we got <laughs> we have a bonus question that was intended for uh, unanswerable questions, but unfortunately we i mean depending on how you look at it unfortunately we found the answer <laughs> uh <laughs> the inspector general of the department of homeland security um joseph kafari was under, was under fire from members of congress for mishandling the investigation in the missing secret service text messages from the one six insurrection hey i bet you forgot all about that. There was a whole fucking coup that was being investigated and we just completely ignore that shit now because the world is so crazy. Uh, yeah, despite requests from Congress, Kafari refused to turn over documents and prevented his employees from testifying and now members of the co Congressional Oversight Committee are calling for his removal. Why would an inspector general be attempting by all accounts to obstruct an investigation and why hasn't Biden removed him yet? Why, while I don't have an answer to why he's yet to be removed, um, what we do have an answer is to why he might be obstructing said investigation. Um, what we have there is information recently discovered by crew, um, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics, uh, recently uncovered some emails suggesting that the Secret Service is, the Secret Service was in fact aware days before the one six attack on the Capitol that motherfuckers was coming. They were coming to the Capitol. They were going after everybody. Nancy Pelosi's life was in danger, and the Secret Service was like, "Yeah, we don't gotta let anybody know about this. Not not that important. Not not that relevant." And that's why you might want to, I don't know, obstruct an investigation into where those text messages went. The end. In, end of discussion on that. It's pretty cut and dry. Good job, guys. Nice. Good, good Carol, job. I was totally there when you said that. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you back, Carol. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome back to the show. They, uh, you know, when I was reading, when I was working on the story, and then I was reading the emails, and, and all I could think was like, what the fuck? Like, the dereliction of duty, but not only that, but that they were willing 
to sit back knowing that the third in line to succession to the presidency was in danger and do nothing. To do nothing. And I honestly think that it, they, they just waited until, you know, hours after when they finally alerted the, you know, Capitol police officers, that they were waiting to see what would happen. That they were sitting back and waiting to see, like, if she was going to be fucking killed. Because there's no other explanation for it. Like, I can't reason in my mind any other reason for it. For them sitting back and other than them thinking that she was probably going to be killed. And when that shit didn't happen, they're like, oh, hey. Just to let you know, um, we got this on the wire, like, you know, whatever. And that is frightening. Yeah, um, it makes me start to wonder, this is another unanswerable question, I guess, but why, what, do you think there's like a certain percentage of Secret Service agents who didn't know about this, was the information disseminated to them? Did they have it in a meaningful way? I mean, I, I initially was assuming that they deleted their text, text messages of their own accord because they were incriminated, but it couldn't be the whole Secret Service. That's, bull, like, that's bullshit. Trump gave so many of them COVID and had like no regard for their, their personhood or safety. They, I have to imagine a lot of them hated him. Um, yeah. But... That's the speculation part, I guess. But I am imagining they were forced to delete their text messages, right? It wasn't like either it was either they were forced individually or um, it was a wide scale deletion. But I'm my speculation here is uh, what was I gonna say? What? No, but it was that, um. It's not just to cover up the guilt of some, it's probably to cover up all of those secret service members who were trying to do the right thing and demonstrating knowledge and that the, um, the higher ups had the knowledge. So if they were saying like, oh shit, we need to protect Nancy and, um, and that that produces evidence that other people um, from a command standpoint were telling them not to or ignoring them, that's... Um, to me, that's evidence of, you know, it's probative of their guilt. Um, that no, they knew I, what was going on. I, I agree with you, Carol, because like, think about like during the televised hearings when they were like playing testimony of the Secret Service agents that were like, Oh my God, tell my wife I love her. I'm going to fucking die today. So it wasn't everyone that was privy to what was going on and the complicity of their brethren, so to speak. You know what I mean? Right. Like they, so they weren't in on it. Like they weren't. So that, yeah, like absolutely. Like, so learning about and hearing about, you know, the emails, okay, yeah. They erased their text messages and the email said, hold my beer, because hold my data, you know? Mm -hmm. Having that other, like the just the juxtaposition of those who were caught unaware and were thinking I'm gonna fucking die today they weren't a part of that so that lends to you know uh, entire an entire conspiracy of the ones that were complicit the ones who had their text messages erased had them erased i put that in air quotes 
Right. Um, under under uh, the guise of room, routine uh, device yeah. transfers, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there are, because of the, what, 26 or what, that amount of secret service agents that were a part of it that had their text messages deleted, but they're not the only ones that were there. Like there's a whole fucking department and the other people there, the ones that were just doing their job, being patriots, you know, et cetera, and being caught unaware that people that they sit side by side with every fucking day were plotting and planning a fucking coup and left them in the lurch. Well, I don't know how much plotting was being done by all of the Secret Service agents, but I have to admit, like, I have to assume that, like, leadership, upon seeing this information, that Nancy Pelosi's life might be in danger. Um, they were looking at the situation like Drago from Rocky IV. They were on some, if, if she dies, she dies. Shit, right? I mean, that's that's got to be what, like, of course, I don't think they'd, like, actively engage in trying to, uh, I, uh, I assume, attempt to assassinate Congress to help Trump stay in power. But they was like, if you try it, good luck. We won't stop you. Feel free. We'll open the door. We'll roll out the red carpet for you. Go for it. Right. Honestly, I think they were a part of it. I think they were. Well, some had to be, but I imagine like if you're looking at the text, like maybe you won't have direct indication that, hey, these motherfuckers were plotting something. But what you would have is the juxtaposition between agents, like the tone and tenor of the conversations of agents who weren't in on it versus agents who were or at least open to the idea. Um I mean, that would not necessarily answer any questions, but it would be a lead for the January 6th committee to follow to be like, hey, these these particular agents here don't seem surprised by um, an army of armed Trump supporters descending on the Capitol at all. They seem rather calm and collected and coherent. It's very strange versus, you know, the Secret Service agents calling their wives and kids and they love them goodbye. But imagine like what it feels like to be like one of those agents who's like just boots on the ground, like you're there. And then to realize that your co-workers, your co-workers sold you the fuck out. Yeah, some horrifying shit. Yeah. And and then you've got your boss man covering the shit up. Yeah. Mm. You know, like you signed up this position like in your mind like you know i'm gonna freaking i'm gonna be a secret service agent and you get i mean it's a no easy thing to become a secret secret service agent and you make it and you go through the whole process and everything and january 6 happens and then after it like you find out that you were put in that position, your life put on the line by people that you can sit next to and fucking have lunch with and, and chop it up with every fucking day. Like what kind of mind fuck is, is that? Um. The alien abduction, cocaine fueled roller coaster <laughs> type of mind. Uh, uh, look, I don't know. It's it's impossible for me to even wrap my mind about, around. I wasn't on the ground on January six, and I'm still traumatized. I I have not gotten over it yet. Sadly to say, I think about it every day, which is probably weird considering I wasn't there. Um, still horrified. To, to this day, um, if you can't tell, 
Um, yeah, haven't haven't gotten over it. Uh, hence, hence the podcast. If in case you're wondering, um, yes. So I can I can vent weekly and heal my trauma mm-hmm. by yelling about these motherfuckers nonstop. Um, okay, I I think we're going to get into our um, closing thoughts here. Carol, you 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 have anything you want to throw out there? Carol, um, are you alive? No. Yes, I'm yeah. alive. Here I am, alive. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was just I wasn't just looking at unrelated news. <laughs> well, it's it's all connected at this point. There is no such thing as unrelated news. It's it's all one giant massive conspiracy with it. Like I I don't care what it is you're looking at, uh, whether it's um you know, Tevin Campbell coming out as gay today. If anyone knows who's that, who that's who did is. Tevin Campbell? Yeah. Um, no way. If, oh if my gosh. Wow. If it's not Tevin Campbell or it's like, you know, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars, it's all related. It's all interconnected. It's one giant massive conspiracy. Uh, I'm on some Alex Jones, uh, gay frog shit right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's all. All interconnected. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway, Carol, closing thoughts. So those were my closing thoughts. <laughs> um, no, it's I, I building off of that. Everything is. Um, it's just a constant deluge of news. It's hard to process it all. Um, I, I suspect that some of that is deliberate because um, they want to bury our outrage and normalize it so that you know we don't see the bad stories as so bad um and i'm gonna do my uh weekly plug for getting the fuck out there and voting we have some very important primaries and special elections coming up next week hopefully this podcast is out before that uh get out and make sure you vote in your primary and uh or if there's a special election especially if you're in new york 19 vote for pat ryan Woo! Woo! I'm done. Ty, closing thoughts? Um, I'm going to piggyback off of Carol and get out and vote. It's important. Um, We are in the fight for our lives right now. And there is no excuse to sit on the sidelines and not get involved You know, all of our lives are on the ballot in November. So just stay strong. Don't get discouraged by mainstream media or whatever polls are are going on um, or or what they say. Get out there. Do it. If you're discouraged by the polls at this point, you're probably a Republican because um, uh, of According to more recent polls, uh, it's not looking good for the bad guys. Uh, if that's some positive news, just in, in, in case anyone out there needed that, things are looking up. Democrats might might keep the House, maybe, maybe not. Probably keep the Senate. Great news, woo! Because we get so little of that here lately. Um, yeah. For me, closing thoughts. Uh, Yet another unanswerable question. Um, what the fuck must be going on in Chris Ray's mind right now? Because <laughs> um, in, in case you don't know who Chris Ray is, uh, he is the current director of the FBI. Um, he was actually appointed under the Trump administration, um, even before uh, special counsel Robert Mueller closed down his investigation. So he's been present for not only um one of the largest counterintelligence investigations in American history, but he was also present for um, his boss's first and second impeachment, um, a coup. And now this espionage investigation, and we got a whole lot of questions and Chris Ray don't seem to have no goddamn answers. Like what has he been doing for three and a half years? Whenever the, I don't know when he was appointed. I'm sorry. I'm not Googling that. Right. I, what has he been doing? 
Why does he never know anything? Why does he never stop anything? Why does he never catch anyone? What is his job description again? Because every time I look up, I'd be like, God damn, it would be really great if we had an FBI director out there catching motherfuckers doing shit before it get out. Of, it would get, it gets out of control. It'd be nice. It'd be it'd be wonderful. I guess that concludes my closing thoughts because no one has an answer to that, in, including myself. Um, but yeah, oh, one more thing. Uh, shithole of the week ward. Um, I hereby nominate Dr. Oz uh, for being a total jackass. Um, yeah, I'm going to assume that's unanimous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, going through the grocery store, shopping for a coup d'etat, crude d'etat, cooties i don't whatever yeah he's well which as we all know traditionally contains asparagus and guacamole i've never seen a spare or rather guacamole on any sort of crude whatever no Uh, that's bullshit i was being facetious yeah yeah right i i'm i'm with fetterman on this one bitch grab a vegetable tray um and that concludes this episode of pardon the insurrection